So I'm going to talk on the roles of hydrophilic channels in cytochrome C oxidase, which is a large respiratory membrane protein. Uh, and this enzyme actually is a member of a huge superfamily of oxidases. Uh, there are the very large uh, mitochondrial forms, such as the bovine form shown here, and there's a whole range of different bacterial forms which are homologous to the mitochondrial enzyme, but are much smaller. All of these enzymes catalyze exactly the same basic reaction of the reduction of oxygen to water, which consumes protons to make water from oxygen. But in addition, they're coupled to the translocation of four protons across the membranes in which they, they sit. And these protons then form the proton motive force that drives ATP synthesis. So the overall reaction is that oxygen is consumed to water, and eight protons are taken up on one side of the membrane, four of which are used to make water, and the other four are translocated across the membrane. And all of these reactions, we know from various studies, take place in the largest subunit, subunit 1, that is common to all members of this superfamily of enzymes. In fact, if we look at a bacterial enzyme whose crystal structure has been solved, this one is from Paracoccus denitrificans, it's composed of three large subunits, here colour-coded in blue, green and purple, with one very small transmembrane uh, helical subunit and the mitochondrial enzyme has the same three key subunits and in this case with ten other subunits around it but this core structure of the three subunits is common to all of these oxidases and since we know that the proton translocation occurs in this central subunit one which is common to all of them We've looked at these structures to try to find hydrophilic channels which might help conduct the protons through the structure. Because when protons have to be moved through proteins, you need hydrophilic channels. And when we look at these structures, it's well known that there are three possible hydrophilic channels. Here I've labelled them the D channel, the K channel and the H channel. That's what they're commonly referred to in the literature. And all of these are in subunit 1, in all of these enzymes. But the peculiarity is that studies of bacterial oxidases have very much favoured the D-channel, shown here in red, as the structure that conducts protons through this enzyme. Whereas studies on the mitochondrial form of C cytochrome oxidase, notably bovine cytochrome oxidase, for which there's a crystal structure, have favoured the H-channel doing this function. And we would really like to know the answer to this because we're very interested in the biophysics of how protons are moved through such structures linked to the chemistry of oxygen reduction. Now, unfortunately, it's very, very difficult to make mutations in cytochrome oxidase from a mammalian source, such as a bovine mitochondrial cytochrome oxidase. So what we've done is to take the yeast enzyme uh, which is again the mitochondrial enzyme and almost identical in structure to the human and the mammalian forms of the enzymes and importantly we're able to mutate the yeast form of the enzyme so this allows us to do the same types of experiments that have been done in bacterial systems to test what this H channel is doing in the larger mitochondrial enzymes and so Here's a, a, just a, a summary, here's a, a picture of what we think the structure of the yeast enzyme is and there are four different residues here which comprise what would be the H channel and we've taken each of these and mutated them and then looked at the effects of this on the proton movements in the enzyme. And the bottom line of this, which is what I talk about in my uh, presentation at the meeting is that the results to date that we have show that these mutations do not prevent catalytic turnover or the coupled proton translocation in these mitochondrial enzymes. So our conclusions at the present time is that this H channel, as is the case in bacterial enzymes, is not the proton translocating channel and that in, in fact probably all these enzymes are working by the same mechanism of the D-channel doing the proton translocation. 
Nevertheless, it does raise the question of what this substantial structure is doing in, in mitochondrial enzymes, because it's very unusual to have large hydrophilic structures like this in membrane-bound hydrophilic enzymes. And what we have proposed, which is a, a, a new development, and we've just written a, a rather detailed review of this, is that in such structures, Hydrophilic channels can play the role not just as proton channels, they can be either passive proton channels, which are uncoupling channels like gramicidin, or they can be proton channels to do with proton translocation, such as we think is the D channel in the cytochrome oxidases, but we propose an additional role, which I've called dielectric channels. And in dielectric channels, these don't conduct protons, but when charges are introduced into a region of low dielectric strength in the middle of hydrophobic proteins, the amino acids can rearrange and so counteract some of the electrostatic cost of introduction of charge into those buried sites. And I've called these dielectric channels and uh, the details are in, will be in that article. Um, so in summary, what we're saying is that the cytochrome oxidase superfamily do indeed share the same atomic mechanism of proton translocation involving the D and the K channels, but that the H channel probably also has a common function, but not as a proton channel, but as a dielectric channel to help internal electron transfer processes. And in fact, we've gone on to, to suggest that this H channel might actually be able to be modulated by external factors and therefore control the detailed enzymatic properties of the core function of the enzyme.